Benny. Hello Bibliophiles, my name is Jill and this is Benny and I am the book bully and he's the book Benny. Um, October has been a month and I have been so busy. Um, my weekends have been full. It's been a good month. It's been a busy month. It's been a hard month. Um, so I had fulfilled, filmed some videos and then uh, I just had no opportunity to edit them or really think about them. <laughs> so I'm hoping to do this um, as a quick video um, to share and I've been really wanting to talk about nonfiction November so I figured I have an hour this morning. Let's see <laughs> if we can knock this out um, and make it a quick um, a quick video to share with everyone. Um, so I have never done a readathon other than the, what's it called again? The one from the summer. What was it called? Previously the booktubeathon, the reading rush. There you go. And I have never done one before and I figured I would um, really make a priority to read, to participate in nonfiction November. Um, I read a lot of nonfiction anyway, or I say a lot. I don't read as much as like a book all of them, but I do read um, plenty of nonfiction. I love it. And so it's not going to be hardship for me to participate in this um, readathon. But I thought I would just share my TBR and um, yeah, and then maybe some recommendations for books that I also love that are nonfiction. Um, I will say that I don't really do TBRs because I'm very much a mood reader and I know that whatever I say I'm going to read now, I'm probably not going to read um, next month, but I have lots to pick from. So um, hopefully I'll, I'm, I'm sure I'll read a few of these um, for nonfiction November. I also don't know if I'll actually read um, only nonfiction in November, um, even though I do like nonfiction a lot, but I do feel like if I get, if I go through phases where I read like a big chunk of fiction or a big chunk of nonfiction, I need to break it up with some, um, something different. It's just kind of how I like to read. And this is why I don't really do <laughs> TBRs because, uh, you know, I just, I never really know how I'm going to feel, um, as I'm reading. So sometimes I just need something else to like jumpstart my reading if I get a bit stalled. Anyway, that's all preamble. So here's what I, and proposing I will read in during nonfiction November, the chances um, the chances are I'm not going to actually meet all of the like prompts. Um, I have some suggestions of what might fit those, but I have other books in the mail that are coming that will fit uh, for nonfiction November, but maybe not for the prompts. So, I mean, I'll suggest that the prompts, but I mean, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter. As book as a book all of says, it's about just reading really good nonfiction. So. Anyway, so here are some books that I have picked up that I would like to read. Um, the first is I got this from the library yesterday. It's called Mad, Bad, and Dangerous to Know, The Fathers of Wild Yates and Joyce by Colm Tiobin. Oh, I can't, we can't see it. Um, I can't pronounce that last name. Is this like, this must be um, Irish? Yes, it is Irish for sure, but I don't know how to pronounce it. But this guy who's written um, the novel Brooklyn, I believe. Um, I don't know why I was so attracted to this book. Um, I don't... I haven't read uh, Yeats or Joyce. Um, I've read a little bit of Wilde. Um, I have a, t a tattoo of Oscar Wilde, actually, not of his face, <laughs> um, a quote of his. Um, but I haven't read a lot. And so something about this book, though, just really spoke to me. And uh, I picked up the library yesterday and I read the first like four pages and I was cackling laughing. So I think I'm going to really enjoy this. Um, I think it's about obviously the fathers of each of these um, three famous Irish writers and um, talking about, I guess, how the fathers shaped their sons uh, into being like the authors that they were. So, and from the first four pages, I can also tell that it's a lot about um, Dublin itself and how Dublin played a role in all of, in Wild Yates and uh, Joyce's writing. So I'm looking forward to reading this. I'm probably going to sneak this in before November <laughs> because I already started uh, just like just the first four pages and um, I know I'm going to really enjoy it. So that's definitely one I will read this month. And I guess it could fit for the um, for the prompt true or voice, maybe voice, giving a voice to people who don't have one, the fathers. I don't know. Um, but looking forward to reading this um, and definitely, I definitely will read this. Um, another one I picked up a little while ago I showed in, in a haul was The Stopping Places by Damien Labasse. This is about um, gypsy travelers in the UK and it follows kind of the history of his grandmother and her generation moving throughout the UK and he goes and visits like those places where they used to stop, um, the stopping places, and kind of talks about the history. There's a map in here. I love a map um, showing like all the places where they stopped. Uh, this is one I'm also excited for and I know Jane Campbell mentioned it and I'm looking forward to reading this as well. So these two I'm definitely going to get to um, like very very soon because they're two that I'm 
um, very, very interested in. Another one I'm definitely going to get to is um, Bill Bryson's new book called Ooh, something about the body. I'll put the cover here. I can't remember the name of it. I just bought it yesterday online. Um, I think it's about, I can't, I can't remember the title. Uh, you'll see it here. But I love Bill Bryson. If you've seen my video um, where I talked about the authors I just can't quit, Bill Bryson is definitely one of them. Um, this is his new book. Very excited to read this. I'm hoping to get it very, very soon. Um, I definitely will fly through that. So 100% going to read that. And I really like uh, how this is not a book about... So Bill Bryson is known for his travel books, which are also... That's how I got into him and they're excellent. But I really like his books that are not about travel, that are about like social, political com and, and historical um, commentary and research. And he's, he's an excellent researcher. He turns um, kind of boring research into excellent storytelling. So um, I'm really excited to read this kind of sciencey book from him about the body. And I'm sure there will be like sociological takes on it. Um, it's going to be great. Another one I'm interested in is a uh, Rob Bell book called What We Talk About When We Talk About God. Um, Rob Bell is, he was a pastor at a really big church in, um, I can't, was it was in Michigan? Um, it's called Mars Hill and he, it was this kind of mega church and it was quite famous if you are in the know of those kinds of things. Um, but he quit that and now he is a teacher, philosopher, theologian, um, writer, that kind of thing. He has written a lot of books and um, I love his podcast called The Robcast and um, yeah, Rob Bell like really like, he speaks like truth to me. Um, and so this I thought could fit for the prompt of truth because um, I like how Rob Bell's works challenge what I know to be true or what I have assumed to be true. Um, he's also a really good writer. Um, this could also fit for the prompt design because Rob Bell cares a lot about the design of his books. Um, he, uh, like font really matters to him. I'm trying to find a, like a, a picture of it. Like he does puts lots of bolding and like he really cares about the spacing of books. Um, he puts a lot of thought into like the cover designs. Um, yeah, so like if we wanted to stretch, we could say it fits for design. Um, but I've wanted to read this for a while. I've had it on my shelf for about a year. Uh, and I figured maybe um, November is the time. So we'll see if I get to that. Another one I picked up about a year ago is called Shakespeare's London by Stephen Porter. Now, <laughs> I have a small obsession with Shakespeare. And not Shakespeare's plays, because I find them boring. Um, but reading about Shakespeare, Shakespeare's time period, Shakespeare's life, sh the people in Shakespeare's life, how he became published, how he became the most famous person uh, in in English literature. And um, yeah, so this is about L London at the time of Shakespeare's uh, writing and life. And that is, there's nothing more interesting to me than that, probably. I'm really interested into how uh, like the place he grew up and the place he worked shaped his plays and the people he worked with. So I picked this up um, when I was in London at Daunt Books. So that was probably a year and a half ago, two years ago. And um, yeah, I haven't read a book about, about like about Shakespeare in a while. So this is going to be um, something I, it's a great push for me to get to it because I've had it on my shelf for so long. Um, another one, so another, another uh, of the prompts is sport. I don't have a lot of sport books. I'm not really a sporty person, but uh, I do have this book on my shelf called Football Nation. Football? Football? Um, I, can't, I can't pronounce it. This is by um, David Goldblatt. This is about, uh, I bought this actually after the World Cup in uh, Brazil um, because it's a story of soccer through, maybe, was it after the World Cup in Brazil? It was after a World Cup. Uh, it was published in, in 2014, so probably after the World Cup in Brazil. Uh, and I really like the World Cup, even though I don't like sports. Um, and I was fascinated. I mean, we all know that uh, soccer and Brazil are, you know, one and the same. And it is like the the nation, like soccer or soccer in Canada, football everywhere else is uh, like the sport of the nation. And I started reading this a little while ago when I first got it. And I got a, like about 50 pages in talking about like, how soccer is different in Brazil than it is in the rest of the world and how it evolved to be like that. And I just kind of put it down, it was just one of those things, mood things, um, but I am interested in it and I figured maybe this is the time to pick it up and finish it. Um, and I do like reading about soccer and uh, yeah, so, oh, football, sorry, I'm so Canadian, uh, so North American. Anyway, so this one, um, something I might pick up. Um, another sport one I'm interested in is Haruki Murakami's book called, I think it's called What I Talk About When I Talk About Running. Um, I have the audiobook from my library that's um, been interesting to me for a little while, so I figured I could easily uh, pick that up if I was interested. And, you know, 
a month ago I would say I'm not reading that because I didn't like Haruki Murakami and then I literally just finished the book After Dark uh, and it's one of my favorite books of the whole year so I figured hey maybe I do like Murakami <laughs> so I'm going to uh, probably pick that up um, to have an, as an audiobook for this month uh, reading. And a couple other ones that I'm interested in getting to is uh, Gutenberg's Fingerprint by Marilyn, S Marilyn Simons. Marilyn Simons. Um, this book is gorgeous. So this is obviously a design book. This is about the printing press. Um, so the subtitle is Paper, Pixels, and Lasting Impression of Books. So this is about like um, the physical making of books and how we appreciate the physical like what is about the, about the relationship between like physical books and the paper process and the printing process. Um, so that is definitely interesting to me. I care a lot about font. <laughs> so um, this talks about fonts and it talks about paper and you know design that kind of thing. Um, the book itself is beautiful like I, I, I bought this book actually because the cover was so appealing to me. Um, I love the spine. Um, they have beautiful end papers um, and like the book itself is really beautiful. End papers are gorgeous. Um, and it's printed on some kind of like special paper because this is about like I read the first couple pages and she goes to like a printing press in uh, this is a Canadian so it's I think she's in Kingston and uh, she talks about the paper and I think this paper some of the paper is actually um, from like that high quality paper maker so um, yeah I'm definitely interested in this and I you know it's something I haven't heard anyone else talk about ever um, I just came across it at my local bookstore and I just was thought it was so beautiful so I've had this for a little while so this is something that um, could also use some love on my shelf. And the last kind of one I have for design is called Compacts and Cosmetics by Madeline Mersch, um, Beauty from Victorian Times to the Present Day. I picked this up because um, six years ago, I heard uh, Lisa Eldred's talk about it on her channel. And um, she, I think she like, her and Madeline Mersch have worked together or Madeline Mersch is somebody who like, knows a lot about vintage makeup. And so this is something that, um, Lisa Eldridge is really interested in if you know anything about Lisa Eldridge and you watch her channel or you've seen her channel on uh, on YouTube she's also like a editor for Vogue uh, British Vogue I believe for beauty so she's incredible and so this is about the history of makeup basically um, and there's lots of beautiful like photographs in here um, lots of like talking about makeup and oh my gosh an old postcard didn't know I had this what a wonderful thing to find. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, I'm really interested in uh, looking at this as well. And I just keep forgetting about it. It's on my shelf and there's just such beautiful stuff here that uh, this, is a, this is a great prompt. So thanks for the prompts to like make me think about picking it up. So that's another one that I am thinking about getting to. Um, so I think that's all the ones that I have. Oh, that's a lie. I have one more. I picked this up at the library sale yesterday for $2 called The New Kings of Nonfiction, featuring Malcolm Gladwell, Jack Hitt, Chuck Klosterman, Susan Orlean, Michael Lewis, James McManus, Bill Burford, Bill Bulford, Buford, and more. Um, and it's edited by Ira Glass. So this is from 2004, I believe, or 2007, something like that. 2000, 2007. And I, I, you know, so it's like 12 years old. But these are all authors I love. I love Malcolm Gladwell. I love Susan Orlean. I read um, what her book, the library book this year. Um, Chuck Klosterman, uh, I have a book by his, like literally sitting next to me, um, a book of his, his new one. And uh, I love Malcolm Gladwell. And I, I love <laughs> Ira Glass. And um, I do like a collection of essays, I have to say. So I haven't read a, a you know, a, many of them in recent times. And so this is something that definitely intrigues me. I don't know how it could be bad. Um, great writers and I think the topics kind of just vary on whatever the person wanted to write about honestly. There's the titles here like The American Man Age 10, Among the Thugs, Crazy Things Seem Normal, Normal Things Seem Crazy. That's Chuck Klosterman, of course it is. <laughs> so um, I will probably read this one. Uh, like it, it's really nice to have a collection of short stories slash essays in a nonfiction month to kind of go back to when you don't have a lot of time to read, but you want to read something, so you can pick through an essay really quickly. So, um, I'm going to get to this. I suspect if I was going to say the ones I'm definitely going to read this month, it's this one. Um, I'm definitely going to read the Bill Bryson one. I'm definitely going to read this library book, The um, Mad, Bad, and Dangerous to Know. And I'm definitely going to read The Stopping Places. So those are the four that I feel quite strongly that I will get to. So now I'm just going to readjust so my foot's asleep. 
Um, now that I have told you what I'm going to read, I thought I would suggest some nonfiction to read this month because, um, like, as I said, I love nonfiction. I read a lot of it. Um, and I was trying to think about what the kind of nonfiction that I love is. And it's generally, um, like, historical, uh, a historical historical nonfiction, um, but looking with a social lens. So it's like a, um, looking at political and social uh, historical instances. What does that even mean? Looking at history through a political and social lens um, and often taking kind of a personal stance to it. So telling it from the story of a, of a personal perspective of a, of a particular family or particular person, um, a particular community in that time. And then I also really like how seeing how it affects like modern day. So like applying those kind of um, seeing how those tendrils of what happened in the past has has rolled out into like the present. Um, so that's kind of what I like. I also and I also like memoirs. So those are the two kind of um, main things that I really enjoy in nonfiction. So um, let me just look at some of these that I have here. Uh, this is a collection of essays by Malcolm Gladwell, which fits neither one of those uh, things. Like, that's not true. <laughs> Malcolm Gladwell, I really like what he does with looking at um, taking pieces of research that the general population would never look at, taking it, turning it into something that is um, palatable, accessible for people who normally would not think about those things or would not think about it in this way. Um, he gets a lot of criticism. Some of it is valid, um, but I love this book. This is a collection of his, um, it's from, uh, he worked for the New Yorker, I think the New York Times, the New Yorker, Washington Post, one of those, whatever. Um, so this is a collection of those publications like in one, like essays in this one book. I love this because first of all, it's a great audiobook. Second of all, um, it's a range of topics. There's one in here that I specifically loved talking about, um, it's about like women's relationships with their bodies, but like about like, uh, which is like normally I would not like a man writing with that, but he talks about the history of like birth control and why it is the way it is. And it's talking about breast cancer, I believe is how the actual like essay starts. So what is it actually called? Let me look. It's called, oh my gosh, I'm never going to find it, but yeah. This is a great collection and I recommend this a lot. Um, really, really loved it. Or anything by Malcolm Gladwell, really, because I really like him. I also recognize that it's polarizing, so that's okay. But this is my <laughs> my recommendation. Um, this is a book I've never heard anyone talk about. This is called What the Psychic Told the Pilgrim by Jane Christmas. Um, it is a midlife misadventure on Spain's Camino de Santiago de Compostela. So this is the story of Jane Christmas. She's a Canadian woman who goes on a uh, pilgrimage, this kind of Christian pilgrimage, to walk from Paris to Spain across the Santo Santiago, Santiago de Compostela. That's the that's the pilgrimage, and uh, it talks about her training, learning how to like hike, <laughs> and then the people she goes with, like the community she finds when she goes with, and her experiences and what she kind of feels on this like um, 800 mile or kilometer. I can't remember it's mile or kilometer, but this 800 distance trek and uh it's funny she's very funny it's a very emotionally moving kind of story uh she meets fascinating people along the way um i loved this book and i recommend like kind of all of her books i really like her um but this is a great fun kind of memoir slash um mostly a memoir but it's very much also about the about spain and about the setting of like and what she kind of who she meets there and and uh it gives you a good sense of like the actual journey so I really enjoyed that one. Um, other memoirs I really liked, of course, Hunger by Roxane Gay. This is the most important book I think I've ever read. Uh, there is, this is, there's a part in this book that talks about um, why, that I think showcases why sexual violence and uh, assault is so awful is because you never ever get to forget it. And that is, there's a part in there where she really showcases that. Um, this is painful, this was beautiful, this is, I love the way this is written because um, it's it's kind of these short choppy sentences. Um, it's not poetic, which is, she's actually quite a beautiful kind of narrator sometimes. Um, but I think this is like, it's supposed to be uncomfortable and painful to read because it's an uncomfortable and painful topic. Um, could recommend this book more that is I think I think it's mandatory reading for everyone in the world so hunger um this is a book I just finished I was gonna save it for nonfiction November and I couldn't wait uh maybe you should talk to someone by Lori Gottlieb this is a her therapist a therapist her therapist and our lives revealed this is the story of a therapist Lori 
who goes to see a therapist after she goes through a breakup. And uh, she's talk. it's her stories of like working with patients as well as her experience with her therapist and what she kind of learns to connect the two. And this book was funny. It was insightful. It was compelling. Um, it made me realize I have to go back to therapy. <laughs> it also made me understand some of the things that I relations I had with my with past therapists or counselors um that it really kind of answers some of those questions or like uh really shine some light on the other side of therapy for someone who is not a therapist and um yeah I thought this was very insightful very powerful um really also quite insightful like enlightening for myself and my own life and uh just like a great great read so um and be beautifully written she was a journalist before she became a therapist so um I mean, super readable and highly recommend this one as well. Now, some other ones that um, I haven't heard people talk about recently or maybe ever. This is a chunker. <laughs> this is Live from New York, the complete uncensored, uncensored history of Saturday Night Live as told by its stars, writers, and guests. So this book is great. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with the SNL, which is not really for this video some other time. Um, but uh, this book is so good. It gives a lot of insight. It goes from basically the very first days to even before the conception of SNL to its very first stars. So it, it has um, commentary from everybody who worked there at that time, writers, producers, the actual stars. Um, and we also have like photographs from that time, which is, you know, amazing. Um, and it goes up until, um, when was this published? It was 2000 and, hmm, let's find the actual date because that tells you what season was the last people who were on it. Uh, 2014 so it's you know four years old um, but we end up with like Kristen Wiig is in here Tina Fey you know all the all the Will Ferrell all the big people and uh, yeah this is a, this is you know a 700 something page book is it am I lying to you it's huge yeah it's like 750 something pages uh, this I read in like three days because it because it's written in interview style so it's like very much like written like this um, it's fast and it's also, if you're interested at all in SNL, you should read this book because it's super interesting, very enlightening. Uh, changes some opinions about some people, maybe. But yeah, that's also a great read. And then some, like, obvious choices. Obviously, the best book I've read all year is Say Nothing by Patrick Radden Keefe. Um, I don't have copy right now because I loaned it out to my friend. Here's a picture of it. That is the best book I've read all year. Top five of all time. It is the story of a family in Northern Ireland um, who, the, it's a widowed woman, Jean McConville, mother of 10. She goes missing during the Troubles in Ireland in 1972. And it talks about the Troubles, the IRA, the British uh, Parliament, and basically the Troubles, how, how the Troubles shaped Ireland both in the 60s, moving into the 70s, and then up until the peace, uh, peace treaties. And then also it's a story about how we remember those things. And Jean McConville's story is weaved into that. And it is, um, I think it might be the perfect book. Maybe. I, I just, I love it. Um, I love it. Um, another book that I enjoyed and had lots of feelings about, um, Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. There's been a lot of criticism in this book. I think some of it's warranted. I think some of it isn't. Um, I think this book is powerful. Parts of it are very powerful. Um, I think it's worth reading. I think it's worth reading for men and for women. Uh, I don't want to say much about, more about it because I think it actually deserves its own video, but I will say that uh, I do think this is a good book. I do think it's worth reading and I think it is um, compelling. I think it is touching. I think it is in some ways disturbing. Uh, in lots of ways disturbing, actually. Um, but I think it's um, relatable. So uh, recommend this book as well. Um, the Five by Hallie Rubenhold. This book I already did a review of. This is one of the best books I've read all year as well. This looks at the five women who were killed by Jack the Ripper and talks about their lives up until their murder. So it doesn't talk at all about their the gruesome deaths, but talks about what got them to that place where they um, could could be victims. Um, like their their family troubles, their financial troubles, the setting of uh, of London itself. I will say this book more so than anything I've also ever read, really highlights how awful um, the workhouses were. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, insightful, well-written, just a really, really excellent read. And then what else do I have here? Uh, another great book, The Library Book by Susan Orlean. 
Um, I love this book. Aside from just being a beautiful object, this looks at the, um, the, oh my gosh, what is the library called? The LA Public Library that burnt down on the same day as Chernobyl in 19, 1980, four, five, six. Can't remember which year it was, one of those three. Um, and it talks about, not just about like, who started the fire, what happened like after the fire, but it talks about the history of libraries and how people have come to curate them and how people work at them and the role of them in the society. And I like, this is another kind of a, almost like, almost a perfect shaping of like a storytelling. It's not as good as Say Nothing, but it is still just, I cannot recommend it more highly. It is a great, great read. And if you like books, I think you kind of have to read the library book. And the last one I'm going to mention is because um, I read this this year as well. This is Dead Wake by Eric Larson. This is the last crossing of the Lusitania, which is um, a ship that was torpedoed during the First World War and really got the U.S. into the war. Um, the reason I'm bringing up this book is because people talk about Eric Larson's book, um, oh my gosh, Devil in the White City, which is about um, H. H. Holmes, a serial killer that kind of, he he does the story. It's H. H. Holmes, the serial killer, his like kind of crimes in conjunction with telling about the Chicago World Fair. And um, that one's talked about all the time. I think that one is good. It definitely is good. But this is, I think, better. And I I don't see anyone talking about it on booktube. I think this is be his best, his, of the two, this is the best one. Because it really, again, encompasses that perfect balance of like the personal that we get like people's personal diaries people who were on the ship we get um the we get some stories of like the german people who were in the submarines we get the history of like the of how the tension of the war um built up so we get the political and the economic and the military side of it we also get the history of woodrow wilson um woodrow wilson the president at the time and his personal life in relationship to his uh his now his what who who became his wife and there is i know i want to spoil this for you but there's a letter in here where she, so he okay this is not a spoiler because it's history and so it, it already happened but um woodrow wilson's wife died and he met another woman and they were kind of they were very very good friends and then he proposed to her and she had to think about it and she wrote him back a letter of rejection but the letter is the most beautiful thing i've ever read and i wept and if somebody rejected me that way I was like, there is no nicer way to be rejected. <laughs> um, so for, worth reading just for that. Um, but I mean, it's just a great, great book. And uh, I wish people read this one as opposed to not whatever, read whatever you want. But this is, um, I think, his better book. Uh, so that's my nonfiction November uh, hot take. And um, hopefully, I mean, October is almost over. And uh, we'll be into November and we'll be enjoying these books very soon. Uh, so thanks so much for being here. Have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye.